everyone, Ivy Lee Gaming here, and today we're playing Watcher of Realms. For today's video, we have more dev insights. We have another post as of today, September 28th, and we have some posted in-game patch notes for our next big update. So I figured it makes the most sense to look at both of these for the same video, because the dev insights usually give a little bit of feedback to, for what's to come. So this might have a combination of the update, future stuff, but yeah, let's get into it. The finest blood for the most untainted soul. All right, so question one. This one's actually got less questions, so it'll be pretty quick, I hope. And then we'll get right into those big, big patch notes. I'm excited. So, allowing us to redo the Void Rift fights we've already beaten the first week. Yeah, I mean, I think they mean to improve, record, oh, or show other people. I always thought they meant you want us to be able to do them on auto battle, all the ones on auto battle. That's what I want. But that is interesting. So, we've made adjustments to the Void Rift. It can now be reset at any time, allowing you to freely switch between difficulties and start anew as long as you haven't claimed the rewards. That's not what they're talking about. They're saying some of the fights is just you do an auto battle and that's it. But they don't have the same restrictions as they nor normally did the first time you did it. So they kind of want to be able to redo the fight and see the restrictions and everything to test and make it better or make it faster for future farming. But really, it's like if you go in, you just hit auto battle. I think you can, though. Can't you actually choose which one you do? I think you can choose. You don't have to do the auto battle. You can do the manual battle, can't you? Or maybe not. I don't know. Okay, anyway, let's go onward. Question two. Is a two times event for specific gear set as a weekly event or activity something you guys might implement in the future? They said, thank you for the feedback. We will be introducing more drop two times events for specific gear in the future. Okay. Yeah, I would love it if they would do boosted rates for pulling a certain sets um, or maybe just higher chances to get ancient gear or higher chances to get the best quality gear possible or just the certain sets that they know are more popular like wisdom or night terror or curse you know like pick pick one that's really good in those other sets and let them be boosted so if people are trying to farm out sets to improve their account i like that idea very good raid always did that too all right question three enter the hero's path for example as an average player i no longer have enough combat power to go further and the whole game depends on the fact that i entered um hero's path hero's path is not entering anything collected rewards for entering completed daily tests and left it was much more interesting than I, when i completed the hero's path oh they're just saying like I don't know. That doesn't make sense. The hero's path is not something you go into. Like, once you've done it, you've done it. I entered collector rewards, completed, and left. Just saying that maybe there should be some continued hero's path stuff. But yeah, the whole point is it to be kind of the introductory, as they say. It's the introduction to teach people how to play the game. Um, but yeah, like in Raid Shadow Legends, they always added more set of progress missions like eventually where you get another hero as a reward that wouldn't be bad if later on for this game but this game is still so young i don't think they need to add much to hero's path right now i think it's fine the whole point is just to help new players learn the game and get used to all the features all right question four can you update the hero's search box to search by roles like can i search aoe damage arena bleed not just by factions so we have a similar plan in mind that we'll be rolling out this feature in future gallery. Stay tuned. That's always a plus. I know Dragonair does this really well with having filters in the gallery to search for certain heroes that fulfill roles. Bleed is a perfect example. You're like, I'm sick of not pulling Salazar. Who else can do bleed? I want to try bleed in Guild Boss with my Scarlet Hunt artifacts, but I don't have Salazar. Who else can do it? We should easily be able to go into the gallery and be like, okay, bleed. Who does bleed? I love those kind of features, and I would love to see that added for sure. 
All right, question five. They say, good morning. Uh, of course, I've played and still play other gotchas, and each of them have characteristics on the drops that make the game random but acceptable. So, hero guaranteed after a certain number of pulls. Um, oh, well, I mean, there is a pity system already. Two months for a legendary you don't want to play. You get one legendary within 70 pulls. It might even be 60. We know this is a fact, even though they don't say that anywhere. And the pity is 200. It is what it is. I don't think there should be a specific hero you know you can get as a bonus for pulling. I mean, that's what events are for, so not necessary. <laughs> that's what events are for. That's the whole point of 10 times events, 2 times events, whatever. Guaranteed summon events for Captain Rev. That's what those events are for. That's the whole point. 250 to guarantee a Captain Rev. Yep, that was an event. I'm sure they'll do others. All right, drop chances are too low. Yes, we know that. That's every game, though. That's why there's a pity system. Possibility of obtaining PCs without, even outside of the poll. You have to... You have to put the fusion, but in case you need PCs to sacrifice, I don't know what they mean for a PC. No PC, no fusions. There's no possible farming for the fusions. I don't know what they mean. They mean the characters that you need for the fusion to obtain them outside of pulling? I mean, abomination is what it is. Just like rosin fusion, um, you kind of have to, I mean, that lets you farm the, or summon to get the epics, um, or refuse to get the epics too, but in raid. But I don't know. All the other ones are very easily to obtain the epics. I don't think the abomination fusion seems that hard. <laughs> so many people get all the characters, or you're just waiting on one. Maybe they should have, and they actually they have, they have had boosted. Um, they've had Damon, haven't they? Or am I thinking wrong? They changed Damon. But if they, yeah, maybe put Damon, Harpoon, not that I want Harpoons, but, you know, putting those characters in boosted 10 times events so people can at least have a higher chance of getting the epics they need for the fusion, that could be nice. Yeah, that's kind of get just at least a chance to get the certain epics. All right, so I'm going to skip all the other fluff. He said, we are committing to adding more epic and even legendary heroes to fusions in the future. Yeah, I know that they have different types of fusions in general. It's not just going to be Abomination forever, or there's going to be uh, temporary events for fusions. I have seen people post about that from the Forerunner server, so we know that is a thing. There will be more fusion options in the future, plus they do the ones for the Epic Lords, which is really nice, I think. And they're very easy to do to get one copy. Very easy. You barely have to play to get one copy. <laughs> Alright, since my last refund, I found Payment Exploit. Monthly card gives you 40 summons, so 40 summons around blah blah blah. After my refund, I got deducted, and you keep the monthly card, so you gain a gem profit. Wait, what? No one... So are they telling people how to cheese the system? That's a really weird post. They should not be posting this publicly. But yes, you should not be... They should ban people's accounts that are trying to get refunds for summons. That should be banned. You can't do that. You can't get summon refunds for anything related to summons, whether it be crystals like the monthly card or diamonds. You can't because what? Every single time someone doesn't get the legendary they want, they ask for a refund. They should ban people that do that. That is wrong. And it's completely against the point of a gotcha game. If you don't like it, don't play a gotcha game where things are random. If you're going to spend your money. You need to accept the risks that your money could go nowhere. That's the whole point. That is the reality. If you don't like it, then don't spend your money. That's I really hate when people talk about exploiting the systems. And I actually have been surprised to hear that this game doesn't always ban people. Honestly, I'm really surprised to hear that. All right, so just like to ask you guys if you can make the legendary summoning crystal work with the one plus one of summon event. I waited for whoever event to end up. Over oh, waited for Valeria, I think they mean. Still a new player, considering this. We will take suggestions into considerations and may incorporate in future summon events. Yeah, one plus one with sacreds. I mean, sorry, legendary crystals, divine summoning. I mean, that's pretty easy for, like, it might be, I feel like they would, I don't know, that's like giving it away. Oh, 
wouldn't be bad. I mean, any kind of summon events are great. And the more generous they are, the better. But I feel like that might be asking for a little bit much. All right, let me do a quick translation. So display the health scale somewhere under the battle health scale or vertically on the top left of the screen. For example, there's a lot of mobs. Display the total health value of all mobs on one scale as additional indicator on the left and right screen as an option. So just looking for ways to better see the HP left of the heroes you're fighting. Instead of having like a clusterfuck of stuff, you can't really tell what they have. So we have been making overall adjustments in the base height of dis uh, damage displays and repositioning them for elite monsters. I don't know. <laughs> All right, next. Question nine. For my opinion on the hero Lori uh, Laurel is too weak to be an epic hero. She barely does damage. Um, You don't understand Laurel if you're saying she's weak. That's a you problem. That's a you problem. Start watching people on YouTube. Laurel has a very special ability that allows you to cheese a lot of content. There's a reason people use her the way they use her. She can help you progress dramatically, and she does not need to do damage to help you progress. Um, Laurel's power as support character is truly remarkable. It's about her support, not about her damage. Mari does not do great damage, but she's amazing for her freeze and her slows and just the the crowd control she provides or enabling your if you have a morrigan she can be the person throwing some some of those crowd control things on a character to allow the rest of your heroes to do more damage it's not everyone has to put out big damage themselves and her her special ability is amazing she don't need to do any damage to make her awesome so yeah that person just doesn't know how laurel is working so if you do not if you are that person or you also don't know how Laurel can help your content dramatically, definitely just search Watcher of Realms Laurel or just go on some content creator channels, see what people are posting with Laurel and you will be surprised. All right, so this is talking about Aya creating ice bombs. She powers them up twice, but... Okay, this is talking about her skills. Simple bombs are white, reinforced to blue, blah, blah, blah. Okay, they're just talking, th so I'm not going to read through all this. It's just very tedious little details about one specific skill and talking about the coloring of the bombs and stuff, maybe to change their colors so it's more obvious what's happening with the skill. So just optimizing the visual performances for that makes sense, but I'm not really sure what they're referencing with ice bombs. I don't have whoever the hell they're talking about, so I'm not even sure myself. All right, question 11. Could you display a pity timer? They've talked about this 100 times. That will be added. Tracking your summons, recording your summons is going to be added, which might be even mentioned in the next thing we're about to go look at. So I guess we'll find out. All right, we do have a few more here. Okay, this is a little bit longer than I remember, but I'm going to try to hurry up because we have a lot more to talk about. Okay, that. Pity timer. All right, so no less of a bug than more of a user experience. There's no prompt to display that difficulty change in Void Rift is a permanent during the duration of the week for changing settings. Expected to be able to toggle the difficulty rating to go back and forth. Uh, it decided hard was doable. And then you, if you want to go back to normal, you can't. I mean, it says that. It literally, it does actually. It tells you, like, are you sure you want to go into this difficulty, right? So, okay, Void Rift. Um, I, my screen is all weird right now. But if I click normal, it's like, are you sure you want to go with normal difficulty? You can still change the difficulty level at any time while exploring. So it's like, okay, are you sure you want to go into it? Yes. Oh, you know what, though? It doesn't tell you you can't go back. It doesn't tell you you can't go back if you change your mind. You can still change the difficulty level at any time. That do Okay, that is actually very deceiving. Like, if you go with hard... And you want to go back to normal, but then you want to go back to hard. It makes it sound like you could swap back and forth, which is not the case. Okay, that actually is true. It's kind of lying. Um, it You cannot change the difficulty at any time. You can only change it once. So it should not... If you reset it once you've already started, you can't go back and forth and back and forth if you change your mind. So yeah. I don't know. That's a little weird one. All right. Good morning. Do you have any plans to implement saving builds for maps? This It's kind of bad to keep having to change equipment for heroes all the time. 
they have exciting plans to introduce similar features in the future. So at least some sort of gear preset, I'm pretty sure, is what they mean. Gear presets? People always want that. To easily move around like your best damage gear to your favorite people, depending on which content you're doing. At the very least, that. But having different gear sets per map is impossible. Like, even Ray doesn't do that, and they have, they have hero and AI setting build-outs for each map or each dungeon. But having individual gear reset for every single thing is impossible. That's a lot of storage. That's asking for a lot from their servers. <laughs> Let's be honest. Okay. Um, popular suggestion for saving gear loadouts. Again, there you go. Yeah. Um, being able to save the loadouts. Um, same gear, multiple heroes. Loading it up strips it from other heroes if equipped. This allows the quicker switch between... So yeah, having gear loadouts, again, that's literally what we were just saying. So they said they have exciting plans for this in the future. Stay tuned. So it looks like we are getting gear presets soon. Um, and the next one, we have milestone rewards for 510 levels. This one was in the last one. We've already talked about that. Having special levels based on, like, when you hit level 5, you get a bonus. When you hit level 10, you get a bonus. Some sort of reward that isn't like, you hit level 20, here, go buy this pack. We did talk about that in the last Q&A, so let's just skip over that. All right, a quick upgrade feature for upgrading gear instantly is far too slow currently. A new filter for gear in the cell menu. That way we don't have to sort and sell it on finished multi-battle screen. Only know what it is. What's new? The quick enhance feature is not ready to be introduced. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's not what they're not replying correctly again. This person is saying, I only want to see what gear is new when I go into my filters to sort and sell, not enhance it. I'm, oh, well, again, okay, that's this part. But they ignored the second part. A way to only see what's new would be nice so that way you can. Sometimes it shows, to be fair, but then if you click off, it goes away. Or if you switch to, through different filters, it goes away. So maybe something that better shows the more new gear longer than if you if you swap around your filters, it doesn't go away on you. All right. But yeah, quick enhance is coming. So we, we know that's here. All right. Suggesting to improve magic dust. We've already talked about that last time. The ability to exchange dust, like turn rare into epic or epic into legendary or making uses at least in some way of your epic skill dust is something they are working on. Um, let's see, this isn't a big one. I'm going to try to paraphrase. So this one isn't a giant read. So in one of the new quests, you asked a question about the properties of equipment, namely the healing effect. The question was who this should go on. There was a long discussion and clarification to understand what they mean. The point is it's not clear what it properly does. Does it, it increase the healing coefficient for the healer or the healing coefficient for the defender? What is the value of this? Is it a fixed increase or is it a percentage? Um, in their request, you're just trying... Okay, so they're just trying to find clarity on exactly what healing effect does. Like, how much does it improve? What are the multipliers on that? And how does it scale just overall? What does it scale off of? Um, but it says, we, are, we will improve the introduction of certain skills and mechanics to ensure better clarity. So maybe just some, they're looking for some clarity on exactly what it does and how that affects your skills. So, okay, final one here before we go into the patch notes for the day. Those are exciting. I'm looking forward to that. So this is just suggesting different chests for the Dragon Pass rewards. So I'm not going to read their suggestions because that's not necessarily what's going to happen, but you can see that here on the screen but they do say, thank you for your feedback. Our team is actively working on improving the activation of XP and gold bonuses. That is not what this thing is talking about at all. This is talking about the Dragon Pass, nothing to do with gold bonuses. This is the wrong response. Okay, that's a great way to end the dev Q&A. Now let's pause and come back to our patch notes. All right, so these are patch notes for the 10th of October. This is posted in-game. I'm looking at the notices now. It's also on their social medias like Discord. So they... Oh, shit. What? 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 They said this is not coming until next year. 
I remember the first time they announced Guild Wars coming to the Forerunner server, they said, and coming to global in 2024. So they must have had enough experience and positive feedback and adjust, making adjustments as necessary to feel confident to release it to global early. Oh, dear Lord. I mean, I'm so used to going crazy in Guild Wars type content and wanting to be in the top guilds and push, 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 but I can't really compete with the Krakens. So I'm hoping my little guild that I'm in, I, I got de I demoted. I've been asking to demote myself and finally I got demoted. I am not in the top Celestials guild anymore, but that's a good thing. I don't want to go against the crazy Krakens. I don't have the account to go against the crazy Krakens because I'm not a crazy Kraken. And getting some diamonds every month is not exactly going to be enough to make me have a crazy Kraken account compared to how much these people spend on summons and everything. So it's a good thing that for Guild Wars, I'm going to be in a more, ch hopefully, I don't want to say a more chill guild, but maybe we won't have as much hard competition. I can't believe this is coming already. Brace yourself for Guild War, a brand new tower defense feature within the guild system featuring both offense and defensive elements. New skins. The first ever hero skin in Watcher of Realms is coming. Stay tuned. So um, is that Zilla too? More faction trial stages. All seven faction trials will now have 12 stages. It's time for new challenges. And some recently, uh, uh, recent FAQs. Gold is too hard to obtain while gear enhancement costs a great amount of gold. They're working on improving gold drops by adding more sources. They also said that their gear will be selling for more. That is something that was added to... <laughs> exactly. Can selling gear grant more gold? The next one. The prices will be adjusted. You can expect a higher selling price. That was already a change made to the Forerunner server. So they did increase how much gold was going to... Or the gear was going to sell for. Not insane, but it will definitely make an impact over time. All right. So can I save... The gold bonus and XP bonus, this is always a topic. They said they're working on adding features for XP and gold bonuses, so that way people don't have to use them instantly. Would be great if you accidentally accept one and you don't want to use it right now. And people are always complaining about the difficulty of Void Rift, but they've added a middle level called Elite between Normal and Hard. We already know that that is coming as well. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be in this actual update because this is not a full patch notes this is just a little teaser right so there could be a whole bunch more coming once we have the full patch notes i will of course do a video on that and we will break that down together but honestly people <laughs> i don't like when people complain about content being too hard when the game's only been out for like a month or two it's like relax we okay, not a month or two a couple months now whatever but still you need to have content that's hard. People need stuff to strive for. The people that wail out need to have content too, or, or else they're going to lose them as spenders and as players. Like there needs to be hard content. Let there be hard content. Stop complaining that something is hard. Just work. Don't worry about it for now. Do normal Void Rift when you can. Don't worry about doing the hard difficulty. I'm not even looking at the hard difficulty yet. So I'll probably try Elite Mode. I don't know. Just. Wait until your account is there and then try it again. It just takes time. It takes grinding. It takes improving your gear and getting the right heroes to like successfully push it. All right. And then I'm always confused with the server launch time for every update due to the time difference in local. So a countdown will be added in a recent update showing the time left before server launch time. Okay. Yeah, I kind of... Sometimes this is one of those games that likes to change their UTC display a lot. Sometimes they talk about things in UTC minus eight. And then that's even more confusing because that's like California, I think. Yeah, that's like California time. But then I know that it's a China based company and like that's plus eight. And I've had them talk to me about, this update's going live at plus eight. I'm like, do you mean minus eight? They're like, no, we mean plus eight. I'm like, but you show everything in your game minus eight. Why? Stop confusing me. I really wish every game, I love that most games do this, but this game does not. Just, just do everything in UTC GMT, the universal Greenwich time, the one that never changes depending on your time zone. 
and players just need to use get used to timing things from that as well because every game should just have that universal time of you're like okay i know i know that i am plus three from utc right now when it's daylight savings time i'm only going to be plus two i know that already because i've gotten used to it like this is something people need to learn based on where they live and i think it'd be great if every game would just be a little bit more friendly with that keeping the more universal time because that's the one that never changes and a lot of people have daylight savings time but not everybody does so it just makes it even more confusing but if you just have like a timer in game overall of course that's a good quality of life improvement to always know when things are resetting overall or when a patch is coming all right last but not least is it possible to skip the gear enhancement animation they said we plan to add quick enhance which will be unlocked after campaign n-84 so i do think that in this actual patch for the 10th we are going to get quick enhance at least it sounds like that that would make sense and maybe some of the other things we talk about like i think we're getting the elite stage of void rift then as well but i can't believe guild wars is coming already i can't believe that i'm shocked but all right guys uh, that was the patch and some developer notes we have lots of stuff coming lots of updates good to see that's all for today's video. I'll see you in the next one.